versatility is, I think, the most important aspect to being a successful freelancer on the flute. If you are like how I was in music school, learning flute concerti and principal flute excerpts, I thought I would go right into a full-time orchestra job, win a full-time orchestra job after college, and that would be that, and all would be well. I could safely say that 5% probably less of flutists will win that job. It's a great goal to have and to strive for, of course, to audition for these orchestra jobs, but just knowing that it's the very top, it's the Olympics. It's winning the gold at the Olympics even to get a full-time orchestra job. So you are likely to be freelancing to make a living in music and to be a successful freelancer, it is essential to be a versatile player. So let's cover the three main instruments you will need to be able to play and should own. Number one, the piccolo. Assuming you already have a decent professional flute, the next instrument you should invest in is a good quality piccolo. But if you're like me and you don't have a money tree, you need to invest wisely. And that would be to get a very good piccolo. What I would do to get started in purchasing a piccolo, especially if this is your first good piccolo, is to go to fluteworld.com or Woodwind Brasswind or Flute Center of New York and scroll through their piccolo pages and they have all brand name piccolos, so good quality piccolos on those three sites and take note of the brands and the specs and how much they cost. And all three of these sites, you can have trials of piccolos sent to you to try out. And then I would try these piccolos out with your teacher, your private teacher, or another professional that you trust that's older and wiser than you, or somebody who's already in the freelance scene that can lend you another set of ears and give you advice. Another great place to purchase a piccolo is if you can find a live flute event, a flute festival, a flute convention. They only happen once a year or so, but that's the absolute best because all the vendors are there and you can be there and try them out in person without having the piccolos mailed to you. You can find instruments on like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, things like that. But for a good, decent piccolo, I would not recommend that unless you're already a high-end professional piccolo player and you know what you're looking for. So equally important is where not to go to buy a piccolo is I would not recommend just going to your local music store. Um, these days, your local music store doesn't have anything of quality. Not for, not for a piccolo. And don't, whatever you do, buy a piccolo off Amazon. Just don't do it. Or Costco, unless you wanna make your flute teacher cry five things to look for. Number one, that it should be all wood. Um, it sounds better, it's gonna have a better tone quality, it's going to be better in tune, the intonation is better, it looks better and is more professional. Um, so rather than having an all silver piccolo, which is fine for high school band, but if you're playing professional gigs, you do not wanna show up with a silver piccolo. The second thing, look for brands that say professional in their descriptive title. This is especially helpful to look for that professional title if you're looking on the lower end price-wise for a good piccolo. So a lower end price-wise for a good piccolo is going to be around $2,500. And you can expect to pay anywhere from that $2,500 all the way up to $6,000. And if you do go used, if you get a used piccolo, I would highly advise you don't get anything too old. Piccolos nowadays, meaning in the past 10, 15 years, are far superior to anything made any time before that. Check any piccolo you might be buying, so you should be trying these out. Always have trials. Never buy something sight unseen or sight unplayed. And check and just turn the tuner on. It's going to be wild if you're not used to playing piccolo, the tuner will go around. But uh, you can check with your teacher or with a respected professional and see what they think. If you are overwhelmed with all the choices, which is very easy to do, you don't even know where to start, I would recommend get a Yamaha. Um, it's a safe bet. Get a Yamaha brand new professional in the title, Piccolo, and you'll be fine. Second instrument, alto flute. You won't regret owning an alto flute.
Unlike the piccolo, you can really get by with a, with an alto flute that is used kind of mediocre in quality and on the cheaper side because I think the tone quality is looser, it's unrefined, it's a novelty sound. It just needs to sound like an alto flute. And so where to go about finding yourself an alto flute? A great place to start is Flute World, mostly just to see, scroll around on the alto flute page and see what the name brands are. So after you've familiarized yourself with some of the name brands on Flute World, then you can go over to Facebook Marketplace or eBay or Craigslist and um, see if there is anything, see if there happens to be anything. Um, also a good resource for an alto flute is your private teacher, let, letting them know you're interested. They probably know somebody that is selling an alto flute. So I would say there are four main things to look for when purchasing an alto flute to play professionally. Number one is just know your options for head joint. On the alto flute you have two options for head joint. The straight one just like a regular flute or where is it this curved one um, which will bring the finger keys closer to you like that. Number two is you can go cheaper, like I said, it can be silver plated, it doesn't have to be top of the line alto flute to play it professionally. It just needs to sound like an alto flute, have that alto flute sound, and all the notes need to speak. So just make sure all the notes are speaking and nothing is wildly out of tune. And number three, on that same concept of that it doesn't need to be a a high-end alto flute, it does need to be a name brand. So you can find like an Armstrong, a Gemeinhart, Jupiter. And the fourth thing is you can just expect to pay anywhere from 600 to 2,500, maybe more, somewhere in that range for a decent alto flute that you can play professionally. Third instrument you're going to need the recorder and the recorder you can go to your local music store to find in fact I would probably recommend you start there and you can even go to Amazon no problem $9.99 and you can get a decent recorder that will get the job done there's only two real things to make sure you're looking for when getting a recorder that is acceptable to play in a professional setting. The first one would be that it's just make sure you're getting a soprano recorder, unless you're asked to play specifically a tenor recorder, alto recorder. If it just says recorder in your flute part, you're needing a soprano recorder. The other thing is that wood is ideal if you can get a, a wood recorder that's best. It's only probably eh, probably $50. It can of course go higher end, $400 for a recorder um, somehow. You can go plastic and just get a $10 plastic recorder. The only thing I would say is if you go that route, make sure it's brown or like a cream color. It'll, it'll look better on this stage and for your colleagues. So it might sound just as good as this wooden recorder but if it's neon green or blue it just looks tacky and like you brought a toy on stage so if you're going plastic just get it brown and it'll look it'll look legit so we've gone over all the basics of being a versatile flute player i hope you found this guide useful feel free to leave any comments below if you're interested in more videos like this make sure to hit the subscribe button and i will see you at the gig